Okay, shalom everyone. Uh, okay, we're going to close to Shavuot, so we're going to try and learn a little bit of Megillah to work together. And we'll see, we'll go through the Megillah, hopefully we'll manage to go through most of the Megillah itself, and then maybe at the end we'll also be able to understand a little bit of the concept, what the Megillah is about, what it's, uh, what it's, why it was written, what's happening, what it was, what it did. Okay, uh, let's see, okay, the Megillah starts off with a puzzle, which gives us a kind of background and understanding, what are we speaking about? And the Pasuk says the following, in the days of the Shoftim, but that's a Bimei HaShoftim, Bimei Shvota Shoftim. Shvota Shoftim means, you could understand that they are judging, but Chazal understand that it says that the judges are being judged by the people. Which means there's a lot of criticism about the judges. Not only is it criticism about the judges, but there's a lot to criticize them about. Say when a judge tells someone you're doing something wrong, he says, you're looking at me, look at what you're doing wrong, you're doing way worse than me, what are you speaking about? Leave me alone. Okay, so that's for the Shoftim, a very unpleasant time for me, sir. We don't know exactly when in the Shoftim it is. Later on the Megillah, maybe we'll be able to see where it actually happens with for the Shoftim. What happens in those days? There's a famine. There's a Ra'av in Eretz Israel. If there's a Ra'av, we know it's a punishment. God doesn't just bring a Ra'av. Not only that, the Ra'av is Ba'aretz. It's only in the land. The same as in the days of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, that there always is a Ra'av in the land. And then they can go to another land and do something. There we always know that the Ra'av is in order to create some kind of process. It's not because of a son of Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. It's God wants to move things around. So also, yeah, it could be because of that God wants to shake things around. Or it could be a punishment, more likely a punishment connected to the beginning of the past. Maybe we mention the Shoftim, we understand it is some kind of punishment. What happens? So there's a fair one. An ish means a distinguished person. Whenever the Tanakh uses the word ish, Chazal understands a distinguished person. Okay, so we've got this distinguished person. Mibetlechem Yehuda. He's from, belongs in one way or another to the royal family, because he's uh, not royal, but the leadership family. It's Jebet Yehuda. Nachshon ben Amin Yehuda, who led Israel down to Egypt. And then Nachshon ben Adam, who jumped into the water first. Kalev ben Yefune, who stays uh, on top of things also with the, with the Meraglim. Later on, he's one of the leaders of the conquering of Eretz Israel. Shemek Yudah is a major city, is a major tribe. And Bethlehem, Bethlehem, a, a house of food, of bread, a place that gives out all the food to everyone. And this person goes, what does he go to do? There's a famine to teach Bnei Israel to do tshuva, something like that. No, and for that he goes, Lagur, Bisdei Moab. He's going to live in Moab, Moab. Different nations, the Torah tells us what you can do with them, what you can't do with them. But Moab, it says, uh, as far as uh, Gil, if they want to be Migaya, want to be join Am Yisrael. So there are different limitations after three generations, after ten generations. What happens? Amon and Moab, it says, Never. They can never join. Why can they never join? That's because of what it says. Uh, the Torah explains why they can't join. The Torah, the, the Torah says, They, they should have created us. So when we came out of Egypt, when we wanted to pass through Modern Moab, in order to make the life easy, instead of climbing up to the mountains in Jordan, coming I mean, the whole way out top, two million people climbing up the mountains, down the valleys, up the mountains, down the valleys, could have walked down in the valley at the bottom, that would be much easier. That way, so we also can we pass very away. And there's an expectation from in the Torah that they should have greeted us with wine and bread. Why do we expect them to greet us with wine and bread? That's because Moab and Amon are descendants of Lot. Lot twice was saved by Avraham Avinu. Once, when this Lot is taken captive and Avraham goes to save him. The second time, when Lot is saved from Sodom and it's been uh, destroyed, so it says, that the reason that Lot is saved is because that God remembers Avraham. So now we're asking you, just let us go past. We'll pay for the food if you don't greet us. They say, no, you can't pass. You will come out against you. Uh, We'll fight you if you come, so Ben Israel have to go around. So for someone from Yehuda to leave Yehuda and go live in Moab, that's very extreme. You're going to the one nation where you're not allowed to be part of. Why are you going there? Why are you going to a place which is the opposite of Am Israel? If we meant to teach Chesed and do Chesed, they're the actual opposite. They're not even giving back what they should have given back. Tova. They don't say thank you. It's the worst thing. The first thing a Jew says when he wakes up in the morning is Moderni. Say thank you. He has the absolute opposite. So this person, him, who, which don't stay but up, him and his, and his wife and his two kids.
Then, the Megillah tells us who this person is. B'Shem Ayishani Melech. Well, that's a royal name. It's got Malchut in the name. B'Shem Ishto Naomi. Naomi, that's a, it's a very pleasant name, a good name. Someone's very good for everyone. Oh, we're happy about it. B'Shem Shnei Banav Machlon Vekilion. What kind of names are these? Sounds like Machlon, sounds like an illness. Kilion sounds like a, something coming to an end. Chazal say that these are the same people that are named Yoash Vesaraf in Sefer Divrei Ayamim and says, not clear what's the actual name, what's the, what's the nickname, but if it's Yoash and Saraf or the nicknames, it's because Yoash it Yashum in a Gula, they gave up about believing God's going to lead our Israel forward. Or Saraf Nitreivu Srifa, they were meant to be burned in front of God because of what they did. Machlon Bekilion, that they made the Sav Chulim, or Nitreivu Klaya, okay, bad names. Why, why do Elimelech and Naomi give such names to their kids? What's going on here? Why are they so depressed? Why are they given up? What, what do they see in that generation of Shota Shoftim that they say, if this is what we came out of Egypt for, what's the point? There's no chance. It's not going anywhere. And if things are going bad and there's a famine, let's go to Moab. That's what's happening in that household. That's very hard. It's a very hard thing in a household like that. And then it goes on to say, Ephratim, these are important people. Ephratim means important people. And again, emphasizing that they came from Bethlehem Yehuda, and that they came to Sdei Moab. And the second passage ends off by Yusha, now they there. Not just Lagu, that they come temporary till things get better, now they they there, they stay there. And what happens straight after that, begin the Pesukim, and this happened very fast in the Pesukim, over the time it took a couple of years probably. And dies. And Nomi is left with the two sons. And they marry women from Moab, which is something. Should it happen? That kind of person, they Moavit, why do you marry them? Give us the names, also these the women are important. They've got important names. They lived there for 10 years. They already, they've settled down. They, they belong there. They, they found a place to be in Moab. Chazal say that Urpa and Ruch are the daughters of Iglom, the king of Moab. So they, 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 they're in the high society there. Things are good for them. Do they just prefer the tide, unfortunately, and they don't seem to have kids in the meantime. And, uh, uh, but then it says, They also die. Naomi is left alone. She's left alone. No children. No husband. What's she going to do now? Everything's collapsed. Everything's gone. Everything's... There's nothing left anywhere. What's going to happen now? She gets up. She gets up. She rises. It isn't just the telech. She stands up. She... Until now she was led by her husband, by her sons. Now she's taking charge. Never trust the man. Uh, okay, she wants to go back. The rumor has arrived. Things in Israel are good. Can't go back. She always only intended to come for temporary time. Obviously, she left there, she's going to Israel. Obviously, she's going on the way. Why do I say, that's it was a hard way? Three widows walking together. Chazal said they also lost all the money when they left Israel. They left Israel. It's a wealthy family. There's a family. They've got money. They've got storage. They've got all things. They, they can help the poor people who don't have. And one morning, people as they waken up in bed, they hear carriages go through the street. They look out and they see a convoy of carriages. Nice carriages of the Kavan, the Glot Tzav, Chazal say, leave in dust. Everyone looks like, what's happened? Ah, Elimelech's family left. What are we going to do now? There's no food. There's no water. It's a drought. There's a famine. What are we going to do? They left. Now, when she wants to come back, she has nothing. Three widows walking the way back. Lost everything there along the way, Chazal say. First lost the money, then the husband, then the sons. That's the order that Chazal say. Chazal say things happened over there. But she's going back. She got up, she's going back. And then she tells her, why are you coming with me? She, she tells her, oh, leave me alone. 
stay over here. You have nothing to do with me. This isn't a place for you to for you to come. So stay over here. Well, why do you come? You're gonna come. I'm a, I'm a widow. I'm an old widow. Your only hope of marrying anyone is if I get married again and have children. You from Moab. No one's gonna marry a Moab. It says you can't marry people from Moab. What are you gonna come with me for? Stay here. There's no point in staying here. There's no chance. There's no hope for you. If you come for me, with me, it's to die as a widow. Go back to the palace, to your father. And things will work out. They'll forget this thing about the Jews that you have. Don't worry. Things will be good for you. Stay. And she tells them, God will give you and you'll find each one will find a place, you'll find a husband and things will be good for you. That's the way to do it. And I put not more after to Bnei Israel in the desert with a tent of them, adultery to ruin our research. He tells them, no, the way, the proper way to do it is find a husband and have a good, peaceful life with him. A woman in the house of her man, Isha, the second one is her man. Okay, so they cry, they know we're going to go with you, we want to join you, we want to stay with you. And she says, no, there's no hope, of, there's no chance, I'm, I'm too late. Even if you want to wait for me to give birth again, it's not going to happen. What are you going to come, be old, be widows in Amisrael, then you're going to die that way. Stay. So Opa stays. And uh, Wood comes with, uh, comes with Nume. That's fascinating. You've got a family that left Israel because they weren't very kind, they weren't very nice. And they come to Moab where people are in general not very nice. And Ruth says, I prefer to go back to live with my mother-in-law, the water. Normally mother-in-laws aren't exactly the reason people are going to, if people leave one place for another because of their mother-in-laws, it's not because they want to go live with them, especially if the son is not yet there, is not there anymore. But that's okay. And they want to, she wants to go back with her. And she's prepared to be a poor widow in that energy and not stay in Moab would see so that there's something about Am Yisrael which is different. And even in a family like this, which it was one of the worst, he said, no, but I, I want that. I want to go back to Am Yisrael. I want, I want to be there. I want to be part of that. I don't want to stay here in Moab. I'm ready to leave everything. And she says, he gives a psukim, which are the base for uh, a lot of learning gear afterwards. Uh, okay, Eloi, uh, Eloi. Wherever you go, I'll go, wherever you sleep, I'll sleep. I want to be part of your nation. Same God. Where you die, I'm going to die. It doesn't say where you're going to live, I'm going to die. She understands that there's not much love. love, love there. Okay, that's what she wants to do. And what does Naomi do at this point? She sees she's putting a big effort into it. If there's a big effort, there's hope. You can change, you can move, and things can happen. So she says, okay. She stops trying to convince her to stay back. And when they come back to Bethlehem, people look and they say, is that Nomi? We remember how she left here. We remember the carnival. We remember the carriages. We remember how it broke our hearts. Now look at her walking in. And Nomi says, don't call me Nomi anymore. Call me Mara. Butchamas. Ki emir shabayli. I left full. And God sent me, sent me back empty. Can't find the person now. Okay. Ani melea alachti v'adonai. Ani ani reikam. Ani melea alachti v'reikam mishivani adonai. God is returning. She realizes that everything that happened is God speaking to her. It's God telling them from when they lost their money, she lost her husband, she but she lost her two sons. She have gone already over there, but we didn't. And I understand God is sending me back now, and I'm going back. Although it's a, it's a big disgrace. It's a big disgrace to come back like this. But she's taking it. She's prepared to go back like this. And the last passage of the Perek kind of concludes everything. It says, They come back, Nomi and Ruth, from Moab, and Moavia. They're not giving her any... Nothing's going to be easy for her over here, okay? And Moavia, she can't convert. She's not part of anything. And we know where they came back from. The time when they come back is the beginning of the harvest. It's a time of year. Everyone's out in the field. If it's a good year, if there's it's a plentiful year, everyone's working. The people who own lands, people coming to work for them, poor people who are doing like a shikha. Everyone's out there, everyone's rejoicing. And into that walk these two widows, one older, one slightly younger. The two widows coming back from love, walking to all of that. We'll continue.